Yo, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? Good to see you again. And before we hop into this match, I wanted to talk about a few things really quickly. Uh, if you're looking for some One Piece content tomorrow, there will be a live stream of an offline regional event. It will be a test event hosted by the Booster Box. I will be commentating over the matches for this event, so extremely excited and hoping to see some really great games. Uh, if you do want to check out the live stream, I'll be posting the link down below. It'll be the first link in the description. But other than that, uh, hopping into this match, most of you already know the outcome of this because you are either in the live stream, you've seen my posts, or you've seen me talking about it. Uh, I went 8-2 and two for this event. We were 8-1 and one going into this game round 10. Uh, so this was the game to potentially decide whether I got top 8 or not. And... I had a lot of I had a lot of nerves going uh, at the very beginning of this match. Uh, I was very excited, but I was also very nervous. Uh, I knew that I was going to be playing up against a great opponent, so yeah, yeah. The, I don't want to make any excuses, but you know, for my first time being in this position of going X1, uh, I do end up having a few mistakes that I make, but I do want to highlight those in this match and in this video. Uh, because I do think that this is a very important matchup for anyone that's looking to play Gecko, uh, Gecko Moria or potentially playing Sakazuki and can notice some of the things that, you know, you can capitalize on against Gecko Moria. So other than that, uh, just going to hop straight into the video and yeah. All right. So getting us started here, I end up uh, winning the dice roll, if I'm not mistaken, and choosing first or no, actually, I lost the dice roll. My opponent chose to go second. That's actually what happened. So, uh, yeah, my opponent chose to go second. Is going to cycle out this Rebecca right here, though. Plays a brand new and ends up picking up a um, Amano Marakumo. I always mess up the name, but uh, the two-cost event that bottom decks a uh, two-cost as well as a one-cost. So, extremely strong ev uh, event there. I do fortunately have the Perona to get started. And I get Gecko Moria into trash, which is both good and bad. Um, it's great if we can see a hog back and potentially pick it back up for the later stages of this match. But this matchup is very dependent on who does see those eight cost Morias. And I know that personally speaking, I'm trying my best to see them in this situation. Uh, my opponent is going to counter out of that first life uh, using a Suru to get out of the 6k swing. I didn't see what card it was trashed, but uh, more or less just kind of setting up, you know, the potential future turns for uh, Acos Moria here. I am just going to take this 5k swing. Um, I do think that the first life in this matchup is relatively free, but uh, going forward from there, it can get a little dicey. Uh, my opponent was extremely nice and like such a cool guy to play the match against. Um, he played fantastically well, and, uh, and I definitely... I definitely feel like I didn't play poorly, but I did have some better decision making that I could have done on certain turns. But my opponent is going to put down a Kuzon here, which is extremely annoying for us. Um, as much as I am not a fan of Kuzon on my opponent's board, I love it on mine. Uh, sadly, I did not have a great eruption in hand though, so I am just going to have to use that Suru to get Kuzon off the board. Uh, Absalom is going to go ahead and KO it, but uh, removing two cards to the bottom of the deck, I had to do one of my Acos Morias, and uh, I know that it's just super important to have that card in this matchup, so already just having one in trash is like... It's okay, as long as we have one in hand and maybe we can get it back with our hog back. But, you know, we haven't seen one in trash yet, so pretty pretty much kind of hoping that I have one in hand. Because uh, otherwise, going into our 9 Dawn play is going to be pretty brutal. But uh, we're going to see a great eruption going onto the Absalom here. I know that my opponent still has the Ama, uh, Amano Marakumo, so... Oh, I could end up potentially losing Perona and Absalom here, which would be very unfortunate, but we're just going to see the bottom deck uh, targeting brand new and uh, bottoming my uh, Absalom here. 
This could be a pretty free 6K or 7K swing into Perona. Uh, since it's going into Perona, I'm just going to let that go. I'm not willing to give two cards here for free while my opponent still has two cards, or excuse me, two Dawn active. Uh, we'll see a 5K swing to life. Uh, he, he did have to drop a few cards um, for this turn, but Great Eruption realistically did just draw him that back. So I, I, I think that right now I'm, I'm feeling like I kind of need to counter out but at the same time like maybe maybe just taking this life would be just fine um yeah i'm kind of going through the options in my head and i'm not i know that i don't want to get too low on life in this matchup but i am just gonna have to and uh my opponent does th this might not look like the the greatest play but it actually ended up being a phenomenal play for my opponent here he uses the Ama no Marakumo to actually just bottom deck my Suru. I know it doesn't seem like much, but I promise you it hurt. And you'll see why. So my Suru does get uh, bottom decked. I'm actually, at this point in the game, like totally feeling all right with it. I'm like, okay, that's that's a that was a choice. I'm all right with, uh, you know, my opponent just kind of giving me this free card, but... It realist, uh, realistically ends up coming to bite me back a little bit. But um, I do use Dr. Hogback in hand here, which was fantastic. I needed to get back my Gecko Moria. Unfortunately, though, I am just like looking at my trash and I'm not ex extremely ecstatic about uh, what I'm having to uh, return to the bottom. We've only got two cards in trash, which is not where I wanted to be. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and play Borsalino. We do have the 8 cost for the following turn. However, only having Suru as well as Rob Lucci in trash is a little rough for us right now. Um, I know that my opponent more than likely is going to hit me with an 8 cost here. So a 5k with the leader swing is very free block for the Borsalino. But I... I do expect to lose my Dr. Hogback this turn. Uh, just kind of depends on what he's going for. Uh, I am just going to block this 5k swing though. And if he does use the Kuzan into the brand new, it just nets him plus two cards potentially. And I think that is the route that he's going to go. So we're going to see the Kuzan coming down and the brand new. He's going to use the brand new effect first to pick up a Hina and then the Kuzan to draw one. And I did think that this was a pretty interesting play, but getting Hina into trash is massive. I was hoping that maybe my opponent would miss out on seeing that card for a few turns, but does finally see it, which is a bit problematic for us. Um, I do have nine Dawn here, so I do have a play to be able to get rid of his eight cost Moria. But this, ladies and gentlemen, is I believe where we make our first mistake of the game. And that is going to be, uh, I'm, I'm attacking for five. I'm just trying to get some resources from hand. Uh, I'm going to go five with Borsalino as well here, um, which actually ends up getting another counter. And I am going to use the Sindri to get a couple of other options into trash. Sadly, missing out on getting the card that I was really looking for, which was uh, Helmepo here. But uh, I do believe that I need to get rid of this Kuzan. Kuzan is extremely important right now to get off this board. And I, I know that I'm gonna use my I'm gonna use my Absalom and my Suru to get rid of Kuzan, which is great. I'm happy uh, to get rid of this. Um, however, my my Suru is gone. My Suru is gone from trash. We do not have another one in trash because the other one was bottom decked. Um <clears throat> I have no lowering power in my trash at this exact moment. This becomes very relevant. Um, I was hoping that I would see it with the Sindri, maybe seeing another Suru or another Helmepo, but I took a bit of a gamble and it didn't really pay off for me extremely well right there. And now uh, passing it over to my opponent, uh, they have 10 Dawn, a lot of opportunity in trash. Uh, there is multiple ways that my opponent can deal with my board uh, he is going to swing nine into the borsalino though and i'm just going to have to take that you know i'm not going to give up two two k's for a card that realistically just did its job so we're pretty happy but yeah i know 
I know that if I see another eight cost here, it's going to be problematic. My opponent can get um, multiple draws in. Uh, we're going to see a 7k, I believe, going into life. I, I could be wrong. This might be into hogback, but um, I believe this is into life right here on this matchup. I know I have a few cards in hand. I'm considering whether I should counter out, but actually it was into the hogback, so just going to let that go. But the, yep, the eight cost Moria yet again, bringing back the Kuzon and the brand new search. Uh, seeing two Surus here is pretty massive for my opponent. Um, getting to pick one up and then drawing another card. Very solid, all things considered. And just going to cycle out that uh, Hina once again and just go ahead and pass turn. So I'm up to 10 Dawn myself. But uh, as I was talking about, like making mistakes in the previous turns, this was, I think, my biggest mistake. Uh, I have another 8 cost Moria in hand, if I remember correctly. I do not, ha however, have a Helmepo or a Suru in trash. Uh, so I do go ahead and use the Great Eruption to see if I can draw into something useful here. Um, I, I believe that I apply this to the 8 cost Moria, but I'm just trying to decide whether I should be using it on the um four cost kuzan or the eight cost moria uh but looking at my hand uh, i think i do end up going for the moria and i believe that that was my target i didn't want my opponent to have two of those on board now don't get me wrong it, yeah i don't want my opponent to have two of those on the board so <laughs> kind of fair but i <laughs> i'm just gonna go five to the brand new here and uh, five into life, and probably a nine into life, maybe a nine into the Moria, uh, just to see if I can get some resources out of my opponent's hand. Um, I might go nine here, but using, yeah, yeah, just a simple counter out of the Moria swing. I'm gonna use Ice Age onto his Moria, and now get back the Rob Lucci, I believe into a brand new or Sindri, but, Ladies and gentlemen, I 100% should have gone for the Kuzan. Uh, the Kuzan is a big problem here. Uh, I end up getting an Ice Age off of the brand new, which doesn't help me counter power wise, but it at least it at least gives me some potential option for the second Moria the turn after. <clears throat> This Kuzan, though, becomes very, very threatening. Uh, as the time passes in this match, I realize like just how much uh, importance this Kuzan has on the board right now. So my opponent is going to take some time to kind of figure out exactly, you know, which way they have to go about this. But uh, with multiple options in hand, I believe six cards in hand, and the ability to still use the leader for the cycle. Uh, Kuzan can lower a lot of my board, but I believe this is going to go uh, five and two Absalom and lower my standing Moria by four now. So I'm expecting like an Ice Age, uh, potentially another Moria play, but if he hits me with three Morias in a row, I know that I have been, I have just been duped. I'm like, all right, there's no way that my opponent's gonna have four of these, right? Or excuse me, three of these in a row. Um, that would be pretty bad for us. But I know that uh, Ice Age is more than likely lurking around the corner. Um, we haven't seen like a stage for our opponent yet. So if they were running stage, this would be a little bit uh, a little bit easier of a turn to recognize like, okay, how many cards am I going to be losing here? Because with leader swing and stage, uh, we, we could be in a pretty bad spot. But attaching one to leader, uh, I believe he's just going to go six into Absalom and lower my standing Moria by one. <clears throat> I unfortunately choose to let this go, which uh, at, honestly at this point I kind of had to. But uh, the Rebecca is going to pick up a Hina and now lowering the cost of, I believe, my standing Moria to a zero right now. Uh, now using Ice Age onto the rested Moria, I am <laughs> I am staring down this Luchi that KOs both of my Morias. 
my opponent still has the Kuzan on board, another eight cost, as well as uh, as well as developed just an incredible incredible board and is up on life. Uh, granted, he only has I believe two cards in hand, so there is like a world where we could come back, but yet again have not seen the Helmeppo, and Helmeppo would have allowed me to just do a lot more than I possibly uh, can in this turn. And it's uh, it's very frustrating, I won't lie. It's very frustrating to to stare this down and go, man, I potentially I potentially could have done a lot better if I just had that card in trash, but uh, I'm limiting myself, you know, to working with a Suru in trash as well as uh, potentially a, a Absalom or Helmeppo. Uh, the 2k counter from Suru does stop my swing into Kuzan. I know that now if I attack with leader, it's just 100% getting blocked. Um, and unfortunately, I'm going to have to do that. But I had to hard play Helmeppo. I finally drew into it. And I'm going to use a third Dawn to bring down the uh, the Acos Moria. I, yet again, this is just kind of too big of a threat for me to deal with at the exact moment. I only have two life, uh, no blockers on board. Uh, I do end up getting the Absalom to KO this, but a 6k swing into the Kuzan is a very free block with Rebecca. He's got multiple swings. Um, we're going down to very few cards in hand. I believe only three cards in hand. Uh, I do have four Dawn, and I am going to play the Borsalino. I think that this was a mistake. Uh, another mistake on my part right here is I should have just attached four to brand new and attacked into the Kuzan. If I had attacked into Kuzan, I would have at least been able to get that off the board. But my opponent hits me with a Sabo here, is just going to trash two, um, does end up getting a great eruption off the Sabo. Uh, draws into one right now and is lowering down the Borsalino. I believe with four Dawn left, uh, he is just going to use the brand new and hits the absolute gas, ends up hitting the Hound Blaze, and I knew that right there, that pretty much spells my impending doom. Uh, I am not looking solid now. The Borsalino is gone, um, bottom decked, and I believe the buff goes to the Kuzan being an 8k. We're just going to see five into life. Uh, I have to counter, but realistically, uh, I'm at a point where it doesn't really matter. Uh, getting around my opponent's board as well as going through three life is going to be pretty impossible. So I have to give him a 1k counter because I believe that the rest of my cards in hand had no counter, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, maybe we have a 2k because this Luchi attack uh, is going... No, I don't. I don't even have a 2k. It's just going into my rested Luchi right now. And an 8k swing from Kuzan going into life, I'm just going to have to take. Uh, he'll pass a turn, and I know that with in, <laughs> with 10 Dawn and my opponent's board at the moment being protected by Sabo, we have absolutely no chance. I just go ahead and concede. It was a little rough not seeing Helmeppo early into the game, but I do think that I just made multiple misplays that I could have I could have countered. Uh, capitalized on um, had I done just a bit better and a little unfortunate but at the end of the day I'm really happy with the way that I played throughout this tournament I wouldn't take it back it was a great experience and I'm hoping to do better in the next one I, I know that for sure I've got a lot to learn and I still feel like I am nowhere near being able to consistently play at this level I felt like there was a lot of luck on my side this day but uh, there were also a lot of decision-making uh, processes that I did well and then others that I just could have done a lot better. But that's why I like making these videos. It helps me learn, but I also like to think that, you know, you guys leave in the comments saying that they were helpful for you it means a lot to me. So I'm glad that they're helpful for anybody. And uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one, all right? Peace.